Hello, and welcome to Christina's Kitchen. I'm Christina. You and I will take a trip through time as we visit ancient and awesome civilizations and share some time-traveling tastiness. Are you ready? Let's find out what foods the ancient Egyptians enjoyed. The Egyptian king, known as the pharaoh, wanted his people to eat well. Except for a few sacred animals, there was nothing to stop the people from gathering and growing food. Except in times of drought, when everyone suffered, no one in ancient Egypt needed to go hungry. Grain was stored centrally so that all could share. Food was dried and stored in lidded containers. Food was roasted and boiled and fried and dried and baked and blended. When you look at the country of Egypt, you see large areas of dry, hot desert, not a typical fertile place for growing food. But the ancient Egyptians had plenty of fresh food to keep them healthy, thanks to the Nile River. The Nile flows north to the Mediterranean. Each year, melting snow from the mountains in the south caused the Nile to flood on its way north through Egypt. As the floodwaters receded, they left behind a rich, fertile, dark soil. It was easy to grow crops in the fertile soil left behind by the annual flooding of the Nile. Thanks to the river, the ancient Egyptians could grow much of what they wanted to eat. Over the centuries, they developed incredible watering canals that allowed the river water to extend beyond the banks of the Nile and both water and fertilize the fields. Evidence from pictures and hieroglyphs show that Egyptians used their farmland to grow a number of crops. The most important was wheat. They grew wheat and then ground it up into flour to make bread. All of the people of Egypt ate bread, whether poor or rich. The second most important crop was barley. It might surprise you to know that the ancient Egyptians drank a lot of beer and that is made of barley. Beer was the most common drink in Egypt. There were very few wells. Most ancient Egyptians did not want to drink water directly from the Nile. The Nile River offered fresh water, but the ancient Egyptians had observed that people became sick after drinking the water. So they drank beer made from barley. Beer was also safer than drinking the water from Nile. Their beer was very thick, about the thickness of a milkshake. This beer did not have a very high alcohol content, but it was very nutritional and a most important part of the ancient Egyptian daily diet. With such fertile farmland, they could grow a lot of vegetables and fruits. Some of their favorites seemed to be radishes, onions, garlic, turnips, beans, leeks, lentils, cabbages, and lettuce. The Egyptians grew pomegranates, grapes, and plums for both eating and making wine. The Egyptians made both white and red wine from grapes. They added spices and honey to various wines for variety. They also made a non-alcoholic fruit drink from dates. Their main staple foods were bread and beer. Breads were sweetened with dates, honey, and figs. They had flatbreads. They even had yeast breads. Breads were made with barley and wheat. The land around the Nile was rich in wildlife and the wealthy ancient Egyptians hunted and ate beef, mutton, goat, and a variety of fish from the Nile. They also ate poultry, duck, crane, heron, pigeon, and goose. Some fish were sacred but some kinds of fish were eaten after being roasted or dried and salted. Fish, poultry, and meat were boiled or roasted, and they used a number of seasonings for flavor, including salt, cumin, pepper, fennel, dill, sesame, and coriander. If they weren't going to eat poultry immediately, they preserved it by drying and salting it. Ancient Egyptians grew and stored much of their grain and preserved meats in case of drought and famine. Beer and wine was also stored in special glazed pots. Herbs and spices were always at hand to flavor their food. The upper classes ate meat and drank milk. 
They had wild birds and eggs. They ate a lot of vegetables and dates. Dinner was served on a small table, which was brought to each individual. People ate their food with their fingers. They rinsed their hands between courses and as needed. The lower classes ate fresh bread, onions, vegetables, fish, eggs, and beer. People ate their food with their fingers while lying on mats woven from reeds. There isn't a lot of information on the number of meals that were eaten by the Egyptians. Based on the pictures, it seems that the wealthy people might eat two to three meals per day, including a morning meal, a bigger lunch, and later in the evening, a dinner meal. Most of the population would probably only have eaten a breakfast of bread, and then in the early afternoon, a main meal that included bread and beer. There are hieroglyphs that show pictures of banquets from both the New and Old Kingdom time periods. The banquets started in the afternoon, and unless they were married, men and women sat separately. Seating at the banquet was all based on social class, with those of the highest class sitting in chairs, slightly lower class people could sit on stools, and the very lowest class sat on the floor. Everyone was supplied with hand-washing basins before the meal started, as well as perfumes. Fat and cones were laid out to prevent bugs and insects. There was always a lot of food at the banquets, representing almost everything that the ancient Egyptians had available, from poultry, meat, vegetables, and fruit. In many cases, they made stews that were served with a lot of bread, fruit, and fresh vegetables. The ancient Egyptians definitely had a sweet tooth. They ate fruit as a dessert that included melons, plums, figs, grapes, raisins, and dates. They made sweet cakes out of dates and honey. There was a popular recipe for a fancy dessert made with bread, cream, and honey. They made a bread that was like a cake. On the tomb of Ramses III, located in the Valley of the Kings, Egypt, in Chamber Ba, there is a depiction of a baking scene. The drawings show Egyptians pressing grapes with their feet and then taking the pressed grape juice into a bakery, where dough is formed into various shapes. The shape that is featured most prominently is a spiral bread. The drawings continue to show that once the dough was formed, it was placed into a large pot of boiling liquid using two long sticks. After that, the boiled bread was taken out and placed into a vertical oven where it was baked. Afterwards, many of these breads were placed on trays and carried away from the bakery. We do not know the Egyptian name for this bread or if the bread was a mundane bread used for regular consumption or was a sacred bread used in some kind of religious ritual. Since the drawings on the Ramses III tomb did not come with any writing that may suggest what the bread recipe was like, we will make Shorik a soft, fluffy, and sweet bread roll. Are you ready? Let's get out our ingredients. Two cups all-purpose flour, one-third cup granulated sugar, one tablespoon dry yeast, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one large egg, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, one quarter cup oil, three quarters to one cup of warm milk, and extra sugar for sprinkling. In a deep bowl, combine the dry ingredients well. Add oil and beat the egg with vanilla extract and mix. Gradually mix in the warm milk until you achieve a dough that is soft but not too sticky. Place dough in a lightly oiled bowl. Cover and let it rise for two hours or until doubled. Punch the dough down Cover it again and let it rise for another two hours. Divide the dough into six equal parts. Roll each part into a ball. Shape each ball into a rope. Then 
spiral them together, tucking the end under. Place the rolls in a baking dish lined with parchment paper. Cover and let it rise again.